So let's get into, we'll call it a quasi mailbag question, but someone had said something in discord to me about the Timberwolves and how, I guess I said something on the podcast with Brian Taporic where I said, they're going to break it up. I don't remember being that definitive, but I say so many things. I probably was that definitive. Um, and I can't remember who I don't remember the name in discord, but I've had a lot of conversations with Timberwolves lately and the coverage does skew that. Oh, this is even post Mike Conley extension, which was a bargain two years. That's the other news we missed. We're kind of hitting that now. Well, we are hitting that where, Oh, two years, 22 million. Basically there was some weird reporting about him having a no trade clause. That's illegal. Uh, that can't happen unless the details of the contract are different and he's signing just like a one year deal rather than a two. Uh, but he hasn't been with the Timberwolves long enough to get a no trade clause. And if it was a under the table, no trade clause, the fact that that got put out there, probably not great for the Timberwolves if that actually happened. But his extension is a bargain. And people have still said, though, okay, well, let's look at the finances. This team is going to need to break up. Now, the Timberwolves do not. Like, let's preface it with this. Whatever I title, this might be the preview one. Whatever I end up titling it as the hook, the Timberwolves, they can be here to stay. They're not going to be disbanded over the offseason. You have until the end of next year to get out of, or not get to, well, to get out of the luxury tax or just cut your, your tax bill. So this isn't a matter of, well, they have to move towns. They have to move Jane McDaniels. We know they're not going to move Anthony Edwards. That's a decision that can be punted until the deadline, until around the 2025 draft. They can wait on that. I also think we need to wait and see the playoffs before we decide what this team does. And I mean that on both sides of the fence. To me, the Mike Conley extension doesn't mean, well, yeah, they're preparing to pay like a you know nine-figure tax bill. I mean, maybe, or they just saw, well, this is a good deal. It can be moved if we needed to. He's super valuable to our team as connective tissue, someone who spaces the floor, who can play make for someone his age, who's just like, could be so much worse defensively. Like oh, this is a good deal for that type of a player. And they, it affords them optionality to know, okay, well, this is the number we're at right now. We're going to get into the numbers folks. Don't you worry. That's just, it was just good business to do that extension. Whether you think that you're going to eventually need to cut costs after this year or not. So I view it as let's look, this team is really good. I think when you look at, and for anyone who's, oh, another conversation about how the Timberwolves need to be broken up rather than what's happening on the court. We have talked a lot about what the Timberwolves have done on the court this season. I did a segment with Brian Toporek on who we trust between them and the Thunder. Um, we've talked about them. Grant and I consider them a caps lock contender. They're a very good team. And I would say, I'd probably predict they keep the one seed just when you look at the number of home games they have remaining this year. Um, I would be most, I could see... Denver probably won't put its foot on the gas to catch them, but like OKC might catch them. That is something that could actually happen. This team's a contender. Let's see how the playoffs unfold, though. And I'm not getting into just the dual big stuff. There's all sorts of different concerns. I'm just more concerned in general than about the dual bigs on on defense. I'm just more concerned about the offense in general, where it's, yeah, I'm happy with the way Carl Anthony Towns is being used overall for the most part, but can we get him to space out more? Or can you get more dependable space outs from your wings? Like that's probably been an even bigger issue for the Wolves this year than anything to do with Carl Anthony Towns' three-point volume. Now, but wh whatever happens in the playoffs is going to inform, I think, and instruct a lot of what they do over the offseason. Is it, well, we don't want to pay as large of a tax bill or we're willing to pay a tax bill or does something more wholesale? But if you go into the first round and you get waxed by just the Lakers, let's say they get the eighth seed, maybe if it goes to seven games or if it's the Warriors, they're, they, they end up coming out of the play in the eighth seed but you lose to them, like, yeah, you're going to take a look in the mirror and decide some stuff, and expenses are going to be a part of that. Uh, but I can't, I, I don't know why we would assume that they're just going to disband. If I had to guess, I want to make this clear, of their top six players, just because I love Nas Reed is going to be in there, I don't, they're going to trade at least one of them before the 2025 draft. That's where I land. I honestly think that's going to happen when you get into the numbers. There's been some discrepancies over people said, well, look, I mean, Alex Rodriguez and Mark Ward, they've had to go out and raise more money. Part of that was to kind of not a, capitalize on the rising value of the franchise that maybe they could foot a steep luxury tax bill. They bought it at an evaluation of whatever it was. It was under $2 billion, and now it's over $2 billion. So you've been able to sell stakes in the team at a valuation of that was higher than when you first than, than when you first agreed to purchase a majority stake. So that is just could just be good business overall. Could be you gearing up to swallow the the pill for at least one year. And I'm not ruling out that they just see it all through and they're going to pay whatever next year because this team is really fucking good. And Anthony Edwards, we look at Anthony Edwards and I know Jaden McDaniels have been uneven, but you have two of your core six players 
you throw Nas Reed young enough to be in there. They're only going to get better. And so maybe that mitigates any drop-off you see from Rudy Gobert, who as of now is still a locked to win defensive player of the year and is moving as well as I've ever seen him on defense. The team is really good. So you could make a case that, well, if the playoffs go well and you win a series and you're convincing in the second round, then hell yeah, you keep this team together. The problem with the finances comes down to the limitations you will incur as you get into the second apron. And so next year, the salary cap right now projected to be $141 million. The tax line's at $172 million. The first apron is $179 million. And the second apron is at $190 million. Following the Conley extension, and I had this wrong. I said it off the cuff in Discord. Uh, the, the Wolves are above that second apron now. When you look at their, that's not including anything for Kyle Anderson or Monte Morris. They are projected to be above the second apron. And so their tax bill, really, if they spend, let's just say they add like kind of another minimum guy, they're looking at a tax bill like of about $45 million. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm estimating, I will lower some other estimates to try and give you a, like an accurate number here of what they could be facing. So you're just at a $45 million tax bill on top of having $192 million, uh, 190 plus million dollars in, in salary. So you've like kind of skyrocketed past that apron. Now, $45 million tax bill. Okay, let's just say that's where they end up. That's not including like if you make any other additions. And there's the other thing looming over this. Andy Edwards, if he makes all NBA, his max salary is going to go up by a little bit more than $7 million next season. If you think he's not going to make first team, I think he'd be hard pressed to make second team. He probably has a pretty good shot at making third team. Again, I haven't gone through it just yet. If you tack that on, now you're looking at a point, you're basically in like the last tax band. And I do believe the new tax bans don't kick in until 25, 26. And so the Timberwolves have that going for them. But if his salary goes up by $7 million for next season, okay, well now all of a sudden you're going to see your tax bill kind of explode here because that's going to be like, it's basically almost $4 at you're in that tax ban for every uh, $1 that they're spending on Anthony Edwards. And so you get to a point where this team is going blowing past $225 million total when it comes to salary and tax bills. It's, it's a, it's a lot. Like you're just looking at like it, you're looking at maybe a hundred million dollar tax bill. If you decide to keep Monte Morris or Kyle Anderson, or even one of those guys. So like all of this that we're calculating right now, where your tax bill just goes through the roof is before even considering bringing back Monte Morris or Kyle Anderson that's like, that's really prohibitive. And the issue here though, is why you might see them make a move is that if you decide you need something more significant, once you're in this, this isn't about ducking the tax entirely. It might just be about hovering inside that first apron one, because it's, it's cheaper. Like your tax bill just comes down, but you have more flexibility to where if you're going to be a, a second apron team, like you just can't use exceptions beginning next year. Like it just becomes so punitive your your draft pick seven years out becomes um becomes frozen and also you're kind of starting the repeater clock where if you're in the second apron three out of five seasons your first round pick will automatically move to the end of the round beginning next season and so no you don't have to worry about that imminently but do you want to start the clock on that um you can't use your trade exceptions that you created up uh, uh, in the prior year you can't use cash in trades you can't use even the taxpayer mid-level exception. You become so limited that you can't improve your team. And that's what this issue is with the Timberwolves actually, is that if you're going to lock yourself into that second apron, you've decided, well, this team is done. It's finished. We will futz and fiddle with the minimums on the margins, and we're going to be fine or good enough to win the title. You might be. That is absolutely something that could happen, but that's why the second apron is a concern. And so it's not about, this is where I think the big misconception comes in among people who are covering the league, not even necessarily the team. It's not about moving Carl Anthony Towns. Like he just seems like the, he seems like the piece because he makes so much and because of the whole dual bigs thing and because Nas Reed is cheaper. But if you want to figure out a way to stay out of the second apron, just to have as many, not as many options as possible because the way to have that is to stay out of the first apron altogether, but to give yourself some flexibility to maneuver, you do it 
like that's why you would drop down from the second apron to the first apron. It's not just about they need the Ducks to tax entirely. They can't afford it. Maybe they can't afford it. This is not, I know it's a new ownership group, but this is not a team that has just you know, been spending out the wazoo like a Golden State Warriors team. Now, they can look at it as an investment of we're going to drive in more fans, get more nationally televised games. That will drive revenue. Again, I'm not, I do think there is something, I think, to um, Mark Lors and Alex Rodriguez, the ownership group, that's something that we do need to consider just because they're new. We don't know how they're going to react just because they've given out these contracts, co-signed to these other transactions, extensions. That doesn't mean they're going to pay it. That is something to monitor. The bigger thing is it's not about being able to afford this team or biting the bullet for one year. It's that by going that deep into the second apron now more than ever, because this season teams could still aggregate salaries and trades like the Clippers. If they wanted to can't do that anymore. Uh, you can't even, you're going to have to take back dollar for dollar as well in trades moving forward. Like you can't take back more money than you're sending out that the extent of those limitations can be crippling if you're not a caps lock contender. And so it's not about cutting the tax bill. It's about keeping as many options open as possible in the event that you don't win the title this year, which statistically, statistically speaking, you're not going to. And that's what it comes down to the Timberwolves with all that being said, I do think they're largely here to stay. Um, if they move someone, I would kind of be, the playoffs would have to go very poorly for it to be Towns. I really don't think it's going to be Gobert because of how important he is to the defense and what he gave up to get him. It's not going to be Anthony Edwards. It's probably too early to say Jaden McDaniels, uneven season. Maybe you think you can approximate his value with a player you're getting back as well as some first round equity. It feels like it would be a Nas Reed situation. Like that's the guy I'm circling where if you can get a good first round pick or just two whatever picks and maybe a cheaper like rotation player in a pick, that's something they could look at if it's going to help them either get, you know, are they going to get to a point where they can duck that second apron and stay, you know, within the first apron or where it's, well, we decided that we need to pay. It's not going to be Kyle Anderson, but we need to pay Monte Morris instead. And like, we're going to replace that. Uh, like, or is it just, you want cheaper labor because you are trying to cut costs and it's, well, if we get a rotation player and a first round pick for Nas Reed, which I think you could, like you look at OKC, San Antonio, they've got some extra firsts that they'd be willing to part with. And then maybe just a player that could help you. San Antonio doesn't have as many of those guys. Uh, OKC certainly does. Other teams could get involved. They might just be saying, okay, we can get more bang for our buck by splitting Nas Reed up into two salary slots, let's say, one of whom is cost controlled because he's a first round pick or a trade asset because they're a future first round pick. That is a scenario I could see happening. I wouldn't predict it at this point, at least not before the trade deadline. So there are two big misconceptions here. The Timberwolves don't need to bust it up this summer. They don't even need to bust it up before the 2025 trade deadline. But the bigger misconception is if they bust it up or trade one of their top six guys, it's not necessarily because they want to cut costs or they can't afford it. It might be. It's more about keeping other doors open that are otherwise going to be closed should they stay in that, that second apron territory. Um, that's where I'm at on the Wolves. And if I said differently in the past that they were definitely going to blow it up, I will have a more definitive take on what happens after we watch the playoffs. And I think everyone involved, whether you think that they should keep it together, that this team has constructed is worth paying what could be a $100 million tax bill, or whether you think they need to break it up. I honestly think that we should watch the playoffs and then we can go from there. How's that for a spicy Timberwolves take?